Ladies and gentlemen, the Honourable Tony Abbott MP, Prime Minister of Australia, His Excellency Philip Green, OAM, High Commissioner of Australia to Singapore, the Honourable Andrew Robb, AO, Minister for Trade and Investment, the Honourable Anastasia Palaszczuk, uh, MP, Premier of the wonderful state of Queensland, Ms Indrani Raja, Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Law and Ministry of Education, Mr Baram Gafu, Singapore High Commissioner to Australia. De Ms. Denise Pua, Mayor of Central Singapore. Associate Professor Fatima Binti Abdel Latif, Member of Parliament for Marine Parade, GRC. <coughs> Lieutenant General John Gray, AC, Chancellor of James Cook University. And Professor Sandra Harding, Vice Chancellor and President of James Cook University. Other distinguished guests, students, alumni, and friends of JCU Singapore. Good morning. I am pleased and grateful that you've given up your Sunday morning to join us for the opening of the JCU Singapore campus here in Singapore. Welcome to our campus. After many months of hard work by many people and some disruption to the local community for which I sincerely apologise. The rooms are now ready. The koi fish are in the pond. <laughs> and the lights are on. <laughs> and as of today, we are truly open for business. I hope you'll take the opportunity to see the wonderful facilities that are available to our students and to our local community while you are here today. I am Dale Anderson, Dr Dale Anderson, the Deputy Vice Chancellor and Head of the Singapore campus of James Cook University, Australia. And today I am the MC for this event. While the opening ceremony is happening here and now, I am pleased to let you know that it is also being streamed live to other auditoriums on this campus and through the JCU Singapore website to the world. We have three distinguished speakers this morning. Very shortly, I will call on the Chancellor of James Cook University, Lieutenant General John Gray, to welcome AC, to welcome you here. Then the Prime Minister of Australia, the Honourable Tony Abbott, will speak to us and officially open the campus. After the Prime Minister speaks, we will follow a time-honoured tradition at James Cook University where the Vice-Chancellor and President, Professor Sandra Harding, will have the last word. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Chancellor John Gray to the stage. Prime Minister, Australian High Commissioner, Minister for Trade and Investment, Premier, Senior Minister of State, Singapore High Commissioner, Members of Parliament, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Welcome to this wonderful morning here in Singapore on our new campus. This is an important day in the history of James Cook University. James Cook University uh, is the second oldest university in Queensland and it was established in 1970. The Queensland Parliament at the time chose the name James Cook University to commemorate the first sighting of Australia by Captain James Cook, the British explorer importantly incorporated in the University Act was the requirement for the new university to undertake study, research and teaching on subjects of special importance to the people of the tropics. In 2001, in my third year as Chancellor, James Cook University made a commitment to a program of internationalisation intended to widen the horizons of our students and our staff and prepare them to play leading roles in the increasingly globalised world economy. Because of the university's geographic location in Australia's tropics, and because of our strengths in tropical matters, we decided to focus expansion on selected neighbour states in the Asia-Pacific region. A visit to Australia by a Singapore delegation in 2002 led by Dr Henry Heng, who is present here with us today, 
proposed that James Cook University establish a campus in Singapore through a joint venture with the PSB Corporation. The University Council approved this project because it offered a key cultural and linguistic, linguistic bridge into the tropics of Asia in a country with which Australia has many shared values and experiences. In March 2003, the Singapore campus was officially opened with just 34 students in the Central China Building. And in 2004, with growing student numbers, we moved to the Spring Building. Then in 2006, Dr Dale Anderson was appointed as our Chief Executive of the campus. And in 2007, we appointed Professor Sandra Harding as our Vice-Chancellor and President. And she is also, of course, the Chair of our Board here in Singapore. Both those appointments have proven to be most significant and outstanding appointments from our university's perspective. 2008 saw us occupy a lovely campus at Upper Thompson Road, and subsequently we spread to a second smaller campus at Amokio. Then, and importantly, in 2011, we bought out PSB Academy and because, became, and still are, the only Australian university to wholly own and operate a campus in Singapore. Our operation in Singapore has been very focused throughout on delivering high quality in our research, education and administration. We achieved Singapore Quality Class in 2008. EduTrust four years certification in 2010 that was retained until earlier this year when we became the first ever to be awarded the highest quality rating of EduTrust Star Singapore. Many of the quality lessons that are learned here have been applied to our two Australian campuses in Cairns and Townsville. We are truly one university in two countries with three tropical campuses. Early this year, we, because we were outgrowing our campus at Upper Thompson Road and Anmokio, the Singapore Land Authority, which had been most helpful during our search for a bigger campus, accepted our bid for this site. And that has led us here today for this very special occasion in the history of our university. As I promised Singapore on the public record in 2007, James Cook University is here for the long haul and we will continue to work to meet the challenges ahead. We look forward to continued growth and expansion in our activities. In doing so, we're committed to participating fully in the exciting present and future initiatives and policies of the Australian, the Queensland and the Singapore governments through discoveries and our graduates that can make a difference. And it is now my great pleasure to invite the Honourable Tony Abbott, MP, Prime Minister of Australia, to address you. Thank you. Well, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, uh, Ministers, Premier, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a real thrill to be here uh, to help open uh, this sparkling new campus of James Cook University here in Singapore. And I want to start by saying thank you to the team here at the university for introducing me and my colleagues to some of your students uh, just in the brief time before uh, we come together for this ceremony. Uh, there's something marvellous about the enthusiasm to learn of university students. There's something marvellous about the vocation of teaching. Uh, there's something tremendous about the intellectual curiosity and the restless striving to do better, which is at the heart of all good higher education. And obviously, it's very, very much present here in James Cook University, Singapore. I'm also very conscious of the fact that this is the only uh, university other than Singaporean foundations uh, which has a standalone physical presence here in this great city, uh, this country of Singapore. And I guess that means that if you are looking for the characteristics and qualities uh, of uh, 
an Australian university education uh, of, if I may say so, a Western university education, uh, this can be done, this can be had without leaving home uh, for the students of Singapore. So I think this is quite a special day uh, for higher education here in Singapore and obviously it's another chapter in the story of Australia and Singapore's long and strong friendship. Um, one of the great leaders of modern times was, of course, your founder, Lee Kuan Yew, who didn't just lead Singapore, he made Singapore. And Lee Kuan Yew believed that people should be the best they can be and that the best way to bring that about was through the power of a good education. Speaking at the Colombo Plan Conference in 1974, Lee Kuan Yew said that the best means to a decent life for our people is through the acquisition of more knowledge and higher skills and hasn't modern Singapore so marvellously embodied that aspiration of your late founder. Of course, uh, since the 1950s, more than 130,000 Singaporeans have graduated from Australian universities, uh, many through the Colombo Plan. I'm pleased to say that today, uh, through the new Colombo Plan, just begun by my government, the tide of students flows both ways. Uh, we are returning the compliment that Singapore has paid to us by learning as much in your country as you have over the decades learnt in ours. Um, thanks to what we do today, uh, more and more Singaporeans will have the opportunity to study in an Australian university here in Singapore. As Australia focuses more and more on our north, as Australia focuses more and more on strengthening our links with Asia, universities focused on the tropics, like James Cook University, will be very well placed to reap the benefits. Uh, James Cook University is obviously a flagship for Australian tertiary education here in Singapore. Students from 50 countries are studying with James Cook University here in Singapore. Uh, this university is respected as uh, a teaching institution. It's respected as a research institution. It's respected as an institution which engages deeply with the communities that it serves. And it was good to hear the Chancellor say that this is the first private education institution to attain an EduTrust star here in Singapore. And I do wish to thank the Singaporean government uh, for the support that you have given to James Cook University. I'm conscious of the fact that this campus was once a Buddhist secondary school. And while we are repurposing the buildings, we are still striving to achieve that wonderful Buddhist goal of attaining wisdom through education. University is about growing as a person. It's about opening your mind. It's about enriching your heart and may that long be exactly what happens here at James Cook University in Singapore. Prime Minister, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, please return to the stage for the unveiling of a plaque that will commemorate the opening of our campus.
Ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased to welcome back to the stage the Vice Chancellor and President of James Cook University, Professor Sandra Harding. Thank you, Dale. I too would like to acknowledge the Prime Minister of Australia, Australia's High Commissioner to Singapore, Minister for Trade and Investment, the Premier of Queensland, Singapore Senior Minister of State, Singapore's High Commissioner to Australia, Members of Parliament of Singapore, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends all. Much has been said, and I won't keep you for long, just a few words to end today's ceremony. By now you will be in no doubt that this is a very significant moment in the history of our university. James Cook University is a comprehensive university that values the creation of knowledge through our research as much as it does its high teaching standards. We have a unique vision among Australian universities, and that is to deliver a brighter future for life in the tropics worldwide through graduates and discoveries that make a difference. The tropics worldwide is well worth our time and attention. Almost half of Australia's land mass, including northern Queensland, is located in the tropics. So is the great city-state of Singapore. Flowing from an initiative of James Cook University, the global significance of the tropics as a zone was made plain in the State of the Tropics report launched by Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi on the 29th of June 2014, almost one year ago to the day. James Cook University, the National University of Singapore, Nanyang Technological University of Singapore were involved in the development of the report over three years, along with nine other universities and research institutions around the world. That report identifies a new and potent global dynamic. In no small way, the global future depends on the tropics. The rest of the world will be affected by what happens in the tropics for decades to come. They say that demography is destiny. By 2050, the tropics will be home to more than half of the world's people and to a full two-thirds of the world's children. The tropics is also home to 80% of the world's biodiversity and many of the critical issues facing our world are playing out in the tropics. As the State of the Tropics report shows, there is great and growing demand for products and services fit for a tropical environment, tapping a large and growing desire across the tropics for better health, improved educational outcomes, more and better fit for purpose infrastructure, reliable access to food, water and energy, and economic development that will result in improved standards of living while being attentive to natural resource values. There is also a growing demand for better regional security. Australia and Singapore, as advanced economies, have the potential to play a pivotal role in the face of this new global dynamic. Our nations have the skills and abilities the tropical expertise and know-how that can be leveraged to the benefit of our nations and to the benefit of the tropical nations worldwide. Through its recently released white paper on Northern Australia, the Australian Government is applying a laser-like focus to Australia's north, which is our tropical territory. For James Cook University, this is a most welcome development. A focus on Australia's north and on the tropics is deeply embedded in our DNA. More than 50 years ago, our university was established to be, and I quote, Australia's university for the tropics. The ambition was to create a great national institution focused on the issues of the tropical world. As one university in two countries across three tropical locations, Cairns and Townsville in Queensland, and now working from an expanded campus here in Singapore, we are in a position to give further and better effect to that ambition. Indeed, we wish to inspire our students and alumni and our communities to play a role in the creation of a brighter future for both our nations and for the tropics worldwide. And so to the thank yous. I wish to commend and thank the many JCU staff led by Deputy Vice-Chancellor and Head of the Singapore Campus, Dr Dale Anderson, who have all worked so very hard to plan and deliver our new campus and to ensure that today is memorable for us all. Thank you to Australian and Singapore government officials, many of whom have been working very hard behind the scenes to ensure today's event would be the success that I trust you feel it has been. 
I thank our architect, Mr. Simon Lim of SLA Design, and our builder, K.H. Tan of Shanghai Chongqi, who have done a magnificent job of refurbishing the campus to ensure its vibrancy and functionality. A very special thanks to Australia's High Commissioner to Singapore, the Minister for Trade and Investment, the Premier of Queensland, the Singapore Senior Minister of State, Singapore's High Commissioner to Australia and Members of Parliament, thank you all for adding mightily to our occasion through your presence. And finally, our profound thanks to the Prime Minister of Australia, the Honourable Tony Abbott, for doing us the great honour of opening our new campus. Prime Minister, it was beyond our wildest dreams that you would be the one to do this for us. Thank you to all our other distinguished guests, including the Australian business delegates who have accompanied the Prime Minister today, and to each and every one of you, special friends all. So my heartfelt thanks to everyone. Your presence has made this moment in the life of our university significant indeed. It is with your good wishes, as well as our hard work, that James Cook University in Singapore will grow and prosper, adding to the strong relations between our two countries and our peoples, and to the achievement of a brighter future for life in the tropics worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Now, will everybody remain seated until the Prime Minister and, the, and his official party leave. Thank you. Công ty Tân Đại Dương là một trong những công ty du học đầu tiên và hàng đầu tại Việt Nam, được thành lập bởi đội ngũ các nhà quản lý và tư vấn du học có nhiều năm kinh nghiệm trong ngành giáo dục cũng như được tu nghiệp và đào tạo ở nước ngoài. Với hơn 10 năm kinh nghiệm, Tân Đại Dương tự hào là nhà tư vấn du học chuyên nghiệp cho các du học sinh tại các nước trên thế giới, đặc biệt là Mỹ, Úc, Singapore, Anh Quốc, Hà Lan, Thụy Sĩ v.v. Cùng với đội ngũ tư vấn viên chuyên nghiệp, chúng tôi cung cấp các dịch vụ uy tín và trọn gói cho ngành du học du lịch Mỹ, bao gồm xử lý chọn bộ hồ sơ đi Mỹ từ A đến Z, kể cả các hồ sơ khó đã từng rớt visa hoặc không đủ tài chính, tư vấn chọn trường tại tất cả các tiểu bang ở Mỹ. Chúng tôi tự hào là đại diện chính thức của hàng trăm trường đại học cao đẳng, trung học phổ thông tại Mỹ. Hướng dẫn các thủ tục xin visa, chứng minh tài chính, hướng dẫn điền form, dạy phỏng vấn du học, du lịch Mỹ. Thay giảng hàng tháng các lớp học phỏng vấn, đảm bảo cho học sinh có được sự tự tin trả lời được mọi câu hỏi của lãnh sự quán. Đặt vé máy bay, sắp xếp nhà ở, ký túc xá cho du học sinh. Với phương châm hoạt động là uy tín, chất lượng và mong muốn định hướng cho học sinh Việt Nam một nền giáo dục tiên tiến, môi trường học tập và sinh hoạt an toàn, Tân Đại Dương cam kết sẽ là người bạn đồng hành cùng học sinh Việt Nam trên đường tới chân trời tri thức. Mọi chi tiết xin liên hệ công ty Tân Đại Dương chuyên du học Mỹ, mặt tiền 148/1 Trần Quang Khải, phường Tân Định, quận Nhất, Thành phố Hồ Chí Minh, điện thoại 08 3848 4879 0989 006 890, website www.tân